So, of all the cars you could have possibly opted for, what made you go for the Genesis G70? Well, welcome back to the channel. I find myself once again in the passenger seat, which is cool. Uh, today we are in a 2019? 2019. 2019 Genesis G70. Now, if you know what the Kia Stinger is, this is basically the same car with a different body shell. Uh, it was designed by a former BMW designer. Uh, so it has in fact been mistaken a couple of times for a BMW. It's a very striking car, uh, as you can see. I love the color, and I love what Steve, say hi Steve. Hello. Has done as far as the, the badges and the accents and the trim pieces and stuff like that. The silver with the black and the carbon I think looks amazing. Really stands out nicely. And we've been driving for about a minute and a half and it's both powerful and comfortable. Uh, stock this thing makes, let me get my cheat sheet here. Uh, da, 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 da. 365 horsepower from a twin turbo 3.3 liter V6. It's all wheel drive. Uh, how many speeds? Seven, eight. Eight, yeah. eight speed DCT. And I mean, really that's all the elements for a really nice sports car. Except we got back seats back here. Uh, I've known Steve for two years now. Three, two, three, yeah. So we've known each other a while, and this is actually my first time in this car. Although, to be fair, he's only sat in my car as well. Uh, last week, I believe it was. So, we got some catching up to do in that regard. But, uh, as I have been doing all these reviews lately, I figured... I figured somebody's kind of angry back there. Um, I figured, you know what, this is actually a very, very nice car. Um, I think it's highly underrated and it'd be great to get, uh, get it some exposure out in the YouTube world. So we are going to do a coffee run because Steve and I are both addicted to coffee. We are once again going to my favorite place, uh, his favorite place is his house, but you know, what are you going to do? And once again, Empty Cup, you need to sponsor me. So we are headed over there right now, and we'll catch up with you in a minute. Unfortunate change of plans, Empty Cup on Panic is closed. And it's only 5.30. I'm very sad. Anyway, we are going to head off to a picture location right now. And... Uh, then if Steve is feeling daring, maybe I'll take this thing for a drive and see what I think. Don't abandon me. I promise nothing. <laughs> okay. Steve is brave. <laughs> He's letting me drive the car. Um, so, as far as fit and finish and everything goes, I remember when Hyundai was a bottom end car and Genesis is made by Hyundai, the, hence the Genesis Coupe that replaced the Tiburon. And uh, then there was the uh, there was actually the Hyundai Genesis sedan, which was a performance sedan with a V8. I still can't wrap my head around that from Hyundai, because I remember working on Excels and Ponies and Sonatas. Granted, the Sonata is still around, but the original Sonatas. But this is... This is not a Hyundai. Um, I, I, I would imagine maybe this is the difference between Acura and Honda. But this, this is no Hyundai, let me tell you. This is, uh, this is nice. 
all right let's see what we can do now Steve has replaced the factory ECU in this car with one from Korea yeah Lozik and so up from 365 horsepower stock we are currently sitting at 450 maybe so oh, that's a that's a pretty decent jump from 365 to 450 do you know what got altered in that uh, like what what got remapped or if it's just a uh, different boost pressure or yeah boost went uh from well stock is usually 12 to 14 psi boost and this one's 19 so it's not a not a ton of boost but it's a little bit more and then also timing uh, ignition changes okay and you've also got a different tcu as well correct yeah that's right um also from lozic and um i went pretty much stock in terms of shift uh, aggressiveness because uh, i i like the way the car shifts but um the one thing that genesis and in, in this happens in the g70 and also in the kia stinger is that um, they both protect the transmission in a pretty significant fashion on launches to because they have a 10-year warranty in the united states um, and so the Lozic TCU unlocks all the torque limiters that are on the transmission um, and then also uh, changes the shift points uh, from I think it's 6200 down to 56 because the, the engine makes its power um, up until about 55 and it starts to drop off so okay and uh, you've also lowered the car about an inch right yeah just a a minor lower uh, spring package but uh, something that I wanted there's too much wheel gap so that was just for aesthetics or is there a handling uh, difference as well more or less aesthetics although it's a, I'd say a little bit sharper maybe five or ten percent but uh, five or ten percent matters yeah well so far I mean the, the power delivery is perfectly smooth I'm just driving it like a any old sedan uh, oh um, Steve corrected me on one thing it's uh, an 8 speed automatic not a DCT but like a lot of modern vehicles it's got that DCT feel uh, like in the ZF gearbox that Audi and BMW are both using yeah I'm just poodling along and gave it a little bit there and yeah it uh it's got some giddy up, I've got to tell you. Yeah, and you probably know about your comfort mode now if you switch to sport. And so it changes the throttle mapping and transmission mapping and all that. And where do we do that? Right there. This button here? Right down there, yeah. Just turn it to the right. Turn it to the right. Okay. And then we see the drive mode change. Yep, got it, got it, got it. Those, oh, now, the, now the numbers are in italics. <laughs> the screen is off. I, do I just touch it? Touch it. Okay. I, I thought you meant you were seeing something wrong just looking at me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Lord knows that 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 could be a fact. So, so any, any sorry. Any future plans for the car? Um. None that I can really think of. It, it's I, it, potentially an exhaust. Uh, it's it's almost electric-like in its sound, uh, so it's not very inspiring. And most turbo V6s don't have a lot of sound. But if someone's finally developed a uh, an exhaust for this car, that sounds pretty good. So I might do that next year, but we'll see. Cool. So I'm definitely feeling the difference in the throttle map. That's uh, pretty significant just dropping it into sport mode that's that's cool that, that's very obvious very yeah there's like no boost lag whatsoever at least not that I'm noticing in the, in my the legal speeds I'm driving uh, the seats are comfy I would uh, I know I say this a lot but I wouldn't hesitate to take this on a long trip I guess I just testing all the right cars um, it's got basically all the all the modern conveniences you would expect um, it, it does have a factory navigation or yeah 
and uh, yep, Android Auto, uh, Apple CarPlay, all that stuff. Yeah, it's got that too. This is the factory there. And then when the phone's hooked up, it's got the Android Auto. For me, anyway. Yeah. In sport mode, it shifts 80% uh, of the power to the rear wheels and 20 to the front. And uh, if you turn off traction stability, then it goes 100% rear. But it'll dynamically adjust if you're burning out. Hmm. So what you're saying is they made this thing a lot of fun to play with. Uh, they did, yeah. Actually, with those uh, with stability and traction off, uh, it also has drift mode that turns on. So you can uh, drift the car if you want to do that, which I've done a few times. <laughs> nice. Well done, Hyundai. That's, uh, that, that's surprising and awesome. I'm really, <laughs> I'm really entertained by that. So have you taken this to Gimli yet? No. Gonna? I don't know. It's something I've been thinking about right now. It's just running all season tires, which uh, obviously would get shredded at Gimli pretty quick. Yep. And also the stock pads uh, can't handle a lot of heat, so they'd have to be changed as well. Otherwise, it would be ready to go. Valid points. At least you don't have the same excuse I have about no, no helmet room. <laughs> no. Uh, for those wondering, Steve is a little bit shorter than I am, but, you know, I'm kind of taller than most. I'm still tall, though, at 5 foot 9. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm not, not disparaging <laughs> yet. Now, Steve and I, despite the short amount of time we've known each other, have reached that comfort level where we can take the piss out of each other and <laughs> just laugh. Absolutely. Civic, should I raise it? <laughs> Might be tough to beat, it's a touring model. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sensing sarcasm. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> and so how do we uh, drop this into manual mode? Uh, all you have to do is just hit the paddle. So oh, okay. down for, yeah. Now you're in first, and okay, and it just displays up in the top corner there. Yeah. That's cool. Now you were mentioning uh, because of the way the torque is delivered in this car, if you actually want the best. Is it zero to 60 or quarter mile time that you short shift in first? Yeah, um, uh, the engine makes a lot of torque and it drops off uh, on horsepower after about 5,500. So uh, what people have found with the, the G70 and the Stinger is um, if you shift uh, short shift at 4,000 RPM, which is pretty early, um, you get the best zero to 60 and quarter mile times by a long shot. And it pulls through pretty hard. So. stuff they figure out in Korea. Now, I know you're involved in the, the Genesis forums. Is there a, a big Genesis community uh, for for the G70? Or is it more about the, the coupes? Um, the Kias, well, because the Stinger is the same platform, their community is probably 10 times larger. Maybe that's an exaggeration, but definitely larger. So I think a lot of G70 owners uh, tune into that community to get um, information, but I, I've noticed it's grown a lot in the last year because the Genesis SUVs have come out. So um, yeah, there's there's definitely some knowledge now and ECU tunes finally available. So the starting to unlock the potential of the platform. Very cool. Outward visibility is about what you would hope for in a modern vehicle. Um, in, in newer cars, of course, the A, B, and C pillars tend to be thicker, so they're not as, they're, they're, the visibility is not what it used to be, but it's as good as you would expect in a modern vehicle. Uh, automatic dimming uh, rear view? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, this thing just, 
goes. All it really needs is a little bit of a little bit of a burble out of the exhaust on downshifts. Yeah. Well, you're still on six, by the way. Yep. In manual mode. And it's it's pulling like I'm in third. That's the that's the amazing thing. So the torque you were talking about, yeah, <laughs> I get it. I get it. Now the the, the exhaust on this, it's a valve system or no? No. Huh. On the new ones, yes. On the 2022 and up models, they uh, they have uh, EBC. I think it's called. But this one does not. Well, that's a shame. But it's funny because David keeps uh, saying that you and I should have a race. My my 911 Turbo against this. Based on what I'm feeling, I'd lose. Oh, really? Yeah. Because power-wise, we're we're close. I'm a little lighter, but because you've got the extra gears, I think you you'd have an edge. Be interesting. What a difference three speeds makes. There we go. Wow. That was fun. <laughs> I could get addicted to that. It uh, it holds a gear a little while, doesn't it? It does. It expects you're going to keep driving like that. So it's like, okay, let's do this. I wish we could, <laughs> but you know, Sunday night in Winnipeg, there, there's cops behind every bush. We're all the police watching. There we go. <laughs> Doing the speed limit. Yeah. Okay, you can kill it again. So, of all the cars you could have possibly opted for, what made you go for the Genesis G70? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, well, I was, uh, as I always do, I was just going from dealership to dealership, checking out cars, as I do on occasion, and uh, I was over at Hyundai, and I met uh, a sales guy there, Wade, and uh, he told me about uh, a new Genesis car coming, and I had no idea what Genesis was, and really didn't think much about it, and uh, fast forward a few months, and uh, and I got a call from Wade, and he said, we have a new G70, you want to try it? And I said, I don't know what that is, but sure, bring it down. So he brought it to my house, and uh, and I was actually genuinely shocked with the car. At the, at the time, I had a, a 2016 Cadillac ATS 3.6, which was a pretty nice car. Um, but I was, I was sold. Uh, the test drive of the G70 was fantastic, and... Uh, I love that it was a rear-wheel drive based all-wheel drive car and it had lots of power and uh, was very luxurious and uh, yeah the price was right so that was that was it. Cool. What else were you, were you shopping for anything in particular or just killing time one day and ended up buying a car? Mostly killing time although I had been to BMW probably a couple months prior and I test drove the, the then uh, 340i and uh, it was a very nice car. And uh, what else did I try? I tried the Audi, um, I think it was the S4, which is also a very nice car. Um, yeah, and then, uh, I don't know, it was just the, the price performance factor of the G70 that sort of sold me. Okay. And also the concierge service, I love that too. So they pick the car up from my house for any kind of work, well changes, whatever. They leave me another Genesis and I'm never out of car and uh, yeah, it's great service. Very cool. Well, I just wanted to say thanks, Steve, for letting me uh, partake in this. This has uh, been a fantastic experience. I do love the car. You know I love the car. You've known that for pretty much as long as I've known you. Um, but yeah, so uh, thanks again. Make sure you tune in more often. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff for more videos with cars and their owners. And uh, we'll catch you next time.